Yes, this one. This stupid creature has been inhabiting my brain ever since Pal World came out, and at this point, I don't know if I love it or hate it, so let's just jump right into it because the sooner we get this done, the sooner I can move on from this thing. Starting with Lamball's base, to save on clay and make the sculpture lighter, I'll be balling up a nice Pal Sphere worth of aluminum foil. If you couldn't tell by the pictures and also its name, Lamb Ball, this Pal is actually just a glorified sphere, so we're gonna start there and cover this aluminum ball in some white clay. To get it to stick to the foil better, I'm going to be using some Forbidden Cinnamon Bun icing, also known as Bacon Bond, basically liquid polymer clay. Once the aluminum ball had a good amount smeared on, I grabbed some leftover white clay, and <laughs> just so you know, I did not kiss this block of clay. Those are fingerprints from when I was mixing for the project that's coming out next. <clears throat> Kissing scandal aside, I covered the ball in white clay and did my best smoothing it out so the surface was relatively smooth. I stabbed a hole through the bottom of the sphere with my needle tool just for my convenience and violently chucked it in the oven. When it came out and it was cool enough for me to handle, I decided to sand the surface of the sphere a little bit just so that all the clay we'll be putting on top of it has more texture to stick to. After I dusted it off, it was ready to receive all my clay blessings, but before we work on the wool, which I'm most excited about, we have to make Lamball's eyes and nose. Now, I didn't have the exact color, so I mixed it myself, and once I did that, I rolled it into two balls, made sure they were about the right size, and baked them so they didn't get squished. After those were baked, I added a fresh glob of clay where I wanted the face to be, and pushed the hard eyeballs into it. Using some isopropyl alcohol, I smoothed it the best I could and baked it all together to save our progress. Now we have a ball with a pair of underdone eggs baked onto it, which means it's time for the fun part of adding all the tufts of wool. I tried to be as accurate as I could with the size and placement of these because Lamball's model is symmetrical on both sides, fun fact, so the wool will help guide me when I have to add his arms and ears and whatever else this dumb creature needs to survive. I started by making the outline of wool around Lamball's face, and halfway through it should look like George Washington. After completing that mission, I added the rest of the wool around the face before I started on the rest of the body. I added bigger pieces first, and anytime I added a glob of clay to one side, I was sure to add the same shape to the other side. And listen, uh, I, I know I make fun of this creature, but in this moment, to me, it looks like those are the pecs, those are the abs, and these are the shoulders. Like, it looks like it's on steroids. A roided out George Washington, what an image. Founding father fanfiction aside, once all the globs were on, I blended them together until you couldn't see the baked part underneath. And it's looking good so far, but once I have it all blended together, it is officially classified under international law as a borb, and luckily for us this means I got the go-ahead to add its adorable forehead swirl. With that on, I realized that the clumps of wool were just a little bit too defined, so I took out a ball stylus and blended them together a bit more. When I was done, I used a bit of acetone, as well as just smoothing it with my fingers to remove the lines the ball stylus made. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, because now we're gonna cover all of it up with a delicious, scrumptious wool texture. Now, I thought of a couple ways to make the clay look like wool, but what I found worked best was this rough brush that I had to give a little haircut to. Once I gave the brush a nice fade, I smushed it repeatedly into the clay until it started looking like this. It was also at this point that I realized I did not clean this brush before doing this, uh, but that's okay because we will be painting all of the wool white anyway, but oh my god. I also found that brushing a little isopropyl alcohol over the areas before I smushed into them made the clay a hair softer, or <laughs> more like a wool softer. <laughs> Uh, but that made it a bit easier to indent texture into. And now we are gonna work on the base while our lamb child burns in the oven. For this base, I'm just using a 99 cent wooden round for the general shape, and I'll be making this base a bit on the simpler side since I want all the attention to be on lamb ball. I want the sides of this base to be rocks, so I'm using the incredibly advanced technique of attaching globs of clay and cutting into them with an X-Acto knife until it looks like a rock. I cut the bigger rocks first, and after that I added smaller beads of clay to cut into until the sides of the wood were completely covered. 
Once everything was covered, I put the base in the oven and took out Lambal to continue working on the rest of his features. With the texture baked in, I don't have to worry about smushing his wool, and his features are all very simple. Starting with his arms, I grabbed two equal sized pieces of clay and rolled them both into a point. I used a bit of bacon bond to stick them to his sides and momentarily paused to make his Mickey Mouse look an ass feet. Peas are very simple, but I wanted to pre-bake them so his body doesn't squish them. Back to the arms, I made one a bit flatter because I want him to be holding a weapon, and once it was the right shape, I used some isopropyl alcohol to smooth them out. Next up are his ears, which are also very simple. I just rolled them into longer cones, pressed them down onto the end of my X-Acto knife, and rolled them up and off. I used some more bacon bond to attach them, and used some more alcohol to smooth them out and remove any lint. His shoes came out of the oven, and I attached them to the bottom of his frame with a little glob of fresh clay. With those attached, I could add the last of the wool texture to the bottom, and finally I added a nose because I decided it would be easier to paint. Then came his horns, which were basically the same shape as his arms, and Lambal also has some metal crests or buttons, so I used an X-Acto knife to cut those right onto his chest. We're gonna chuck him into the oven once again and take out our rocky base. I want the top of the base to be cartoony grass, so I cut out an infinite amount of triangles. Here's me struggling to do this, and I assure you I struggled with literally every triangle. I cut those triangles until I was acutely <laughs> aware of how much I hated cutting triangles. But once I had enough, I started attaching each blade of grass one by one. After covering the entire top, I gave it a little brushing of acetone to remove any pieces of lint or little cuts, as well as fuse all the triangles together. After I made an indent on the base with Lambal's feet, I baked it, which means we can finally move on to painting everything, which is always very satisfying. Now don't judge me, I didn't clean my palette before this, but to start off, we're gonna be painting the rocks first. I started by giving all of them a nice coat of a dark gray, but halfway through, I realized I didn't have any water, so I grabbed my trusty ancient pickle jar and continued with the first two coats. After those coats, I layer on several brushings of lighter grays to capture all the angles of the rocks. Next up is our grass, and I'm going to start by giving it about three coats of a dark green, two of which I will water down so the paint can get into all the little crevices. And while that's drying, I use regular paint to detail each blade around the edges and start layering on progressively lighter shades of green. Now the trick for this, and I don't know if you guys like the look of this less realistic grass, but I kinda do, is to not paint over all the previous layers, kind of like dry brushing but with a bit more paint. Towards the end, I'll detail some edges and random spots with a super bright yellowy green and this marks the end of painting our base and the beginning of painting our ball. <laughs> Much like Lambal's IQ, his color scheme is very simple. I'm going to start by painting the biggest region which is his wool and giving that a few coats of white. I also uh, definitely did not almost forget to add his tail. I'm, I'm just adding this footage here to prove that I that I definitely remembered to do that. Uh, anyway, with that done, I mixed up Lambal's beautiful skin tone and painted over all his body parts. Now, it was a tiny bit difficult to get perfectly clean lines the first try, but since the wool is so textured, I can paint over it pretty much as many times as I need to, and it'll look totally fine. Next up are his horns and eyes, which both get some coats of an orangey yellow. His eyes also get the anime bubble treatment, so he gets a light yellow bubble on the bottom half and a larger white bubble on the top half.
Once that was done, I used the yellow to detail his nose and as a base coat for his metallic crests. They both got a few coats of gold on top and now it's time for something very important in every young lamb's life. I got these tiny models at Michael's. They were kind of my only option. Who knew that every store doesn't sell these, gosh. But I ended up choosing this one for him to hold and the other one to be slung across his back in case he needs to dual wield. Since I want him to have a weapon sling, I decided to break out some of my leather clay, which I previously used to build my Korok. And this has consistently been the most edible looking clay I own. I mean, it looks like a delicious block of brownie batter. Uh, <clears throat> don't eat polymer clay. Anyway, I rolled it out into a super long strip and used some bacon bond to attach it as a sling across his body. When draping it over him, I tried to leave his metallic buttons out since I think they're very cute and everyone knows you can't slay without slaying first. I cut the end at an angle and started adding a few tiny details like holes, buttons, and leather hooks. And finally, I figured he might need to store extra ammo somewhere, so I made three simple leather pouches out of thicker cuts of the clay. I attached them to the front and used some beads of bacon bond to act as the buttons. I add a thick leather strap over the back to keep Lamball's weapon in place and bake it all one last time to lock everything into place. I use some gunmetal gray to detail the buttons, super glue his weapon of choice onto his hand, and add some resin over his eyes to give it a nicer sheen. And finally, no adorable lamb could possibly get by without a few grenades. To make these boom bulbs, I'm gonna try using some plastic beads since I think they'll give me a more consistent sphere shape. Now first, I bake a few differently sized clay cylinders, and while they're baking, I give the beads a quick sand just so paint can stick to them better. When I finish that and the cylinders are out of the oven, I cut them into discs and glue them on biggest to smallest. To make the pin on these boom bulbs, I use my X-Acto knife to dig a hole into the clay and glue some cut jewelry hooks into it. Finally, I add the little lever and also plug up the bottoms with some cut up toothpicks. And once that's done, they're ready to paint. I started with a green that was a bit too bright, but eventually I painted all of them a beautiful deep army green and used a lighter version of it to act as a highlight. With that, these bomb bulbs are all finished. You've been very patient, so I'm gonna put everything together so you can enjoy some needlessly dramatic final shots. All right, uh, orchestra. Uh, hey, let's uh, let's calm down for a sec. I <laughs> I have to thank my patrons. Yeah, sorry, thank you. A big thank you to all my patrons, including my new DIYers: Calcifer, Inky, Lexi, St, Cake, Hannah and Joshua, Eloise, Cat, Blanket, Julie, and two goblins. My new crafters: Lacey, Crow, Mana, Martina, Kaylee, Meps, P Mads, Madeline, A Godfrey, and Rachel. And finally, my glorious new artificers: Beardless Props and Timothy M Stepanski. I couldn't run this Pal World base without you guys, and I'm always grateful for your support. The next project is cooking up as we speak, and it's about an indie game similar to Pal World. I think it's called like Pokemon Poke something. I don't know. Not many people know about it. If you have any other pals you'd like to see me sculpt, comment them down below, and I will see you next time.